Okay, so the big thing right now is Baby Yoda. So, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna make a Baby Yoda. Sorry guys, um, doesn't make me feel artistically fulfilled, alive inside. So instead, we'll do one of those other holiday classics. Elf on a Shelf! Now, problem is, this is my new apartment and I don't have any shelves. This is actually my wall, nothing on it. So we have Elf without a shelf. But we're going to innovate a little bit because I do have plenty of balloons and plenty of time to twist. We're going to come up with the new Elf on an Elf. Okay, you might not be impressed, but taking this way past this logical end, Elf on an Elf on an Elf, which itself can go on a shelf. Yeah? yeah no? Maybe? Yeah? Kind of? Yeah, you're right. We should just make a baby Yoda. Whoa, hey, <laughs> sorry, hey, uh, Scott Tripp with the Balloon Blast Video Show. Welcome to the Balloon Blast Video Show with me, Scott Tripp. Hey, look, I know it's been a long time since a new episode of Balloon Blast, like a year or so, unless you just found out about the Balloon Blast Video Show and you've been binge watching them on YouTube, in which case it's been like a minute. So for you guys, welcome back. And for everyone else, Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. Hey, a lot's happened in the last year, year and a half. I'm not going to go into that because this is not Scott Trip Video Diary. That would be a weird channel on YouTube. Let's not even think about that. Um, no, we're more about balloon stuff, but some of these things have affected the show a little bit. I've moved twice, for instance. Um, by the way, this is the new studio. I know, you're just seeing a white wall. That's not a very good studio view, but eh, that's it for now. That's what you get. White wall is pretty cool, huh? Um, what else? Been going to more conventions. Um, oh, another thing. I did want to have a fun segment on here about The Horde, which is the vintage balloon collection. That's still in storage, so I'll, uh, I'll see if I can dig some stuff out of my recent acquisitions to share on the episode here today. But... A few things have changed for the better, you know, we'll have some new segments, some new fun stuff, but the core things that you like about the Balloon Blast video show are staying the same. Still about balloons, uh, still have Purple Pig, we still have all the things that you... That... I have a purple cow, or a bull, I'm not sure, huh? With bones on it? Alright, it's not Purple Pig. Okay, some things have gotten a little jumbled in the move, but we're getting back on track. Give us time. It's been a while. I have to learn how to um, do this thing again, right? So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to dig out some new, new old balloon <laughs> acquisitions and just some weird stuff to look over for the Horde segment. While I'm looking for that, let me get Dan Staples to come in and tell you a bit about, I don't know, the last convention we went to. I believe it was Fave in Las Vegas. All right, we'll do that. You guys talk to Dan. I'll be right back. Hey everybody, it's Dan Staples from Dan's Balloons on the Balloon Blast Video Show. Sam, I don't know what happened to Sam. I think he's riding some balloon motorcycle off into the sunset at the moment. He'll be back. But, I just wanted to talk to you for a minute because I just got back from Vegas not too long ago and it was really awesome. It was at Fave with all my friends. Um, family and Variety Entertainer Convention. It was really cool. Lots of fun stuff. The best part about it was that Pops Cards came out. Bow, bow, bow. Uh, Pops Cards are really cool. They are trading cards with all of your favorite balloon people like Buster Balloon, The Amazing Tony Bubbles, Richard Ramirez the Night Stalker, Dan Staples, Craig T. Nelson from the hit TV show Coach, Kevin Smith, and the beautiful Crystal. Um, 
you should totally scoop up some cards. You can go to poptradingcards.com and get them, or they're going to be at most of your favorite conventions um, everywhere. What? A visitor? Purple Pig? What's going on? You don't have a card yet, I don't think. We're working on it. You haven't done anything good this year anyways. What? You're a father now? I'm so happy for you. Uh, DNA tests are a bitch. They'll get you every time. All right, you go neglect your children and work on getting you a Pops card. Um, you can go check out PopsTradingCards.com um, at your next convention or whatever you want to do. But for right now, I'm going to uh, indulge in a can of pickled green, bleh, pickled green balloon dog from Honcho Farms because that's the best way to stop the holiday season. Uh, have a good day. See you in a little bit. Yeah, he's right. These uh, Pops cards are awesome. Some of my favorite people in there. There's a guy that makes some damage. Tons of fun. I think everybody loves seeing their picture on these cards. So I'm glad that they're making these. And I can't wait to see which new ones debut at Twist and Shout this year. But Dan already covered the Pops card, so we don't need to. We're going to move on to the Horde. This is Mail Call Edition. These are things I've gotten in the mail recently. And some of them I've looked at, some of them I haven't really had time to uh, explore, so let's do that together. First of all, we got this box. I've already opened it. I've looked at it briefly. I've not actually read the information on it. This is Zoom a Balloon Gun. This seems very interesting. You can see on here there's a picture of a human face, but also the gun, which looks like a three-pronged sort of plastic fork device. You can kind of make out on the back. It's unopened, even though it's kind of peeling here. I'm not going to violate the integrity of the packaging any more than it already has. It's a little smash too. But my guess from the package illustration is that you, when you do the balloon barrage, where you put your finger on the balloon end of a, well, any size balloon really, three inch cylinder is really good for it, and let it go like that, woo, and do the balloon barrage. My guess is this gun makes it easier to shoot balloons, so I don't know. Seems fun. Bought it, put it in the hoard. This one came in the mail. I believe I know what this one is. It says, stamps on the back. It's not stamps. It's a ruse. It's all a red herring. Um, it'd be cool if I actually ordered a red herring, huh? It is cardboard. It's lots of cardboard. Apparently they really wanted to pack this well. It is not a cool touch electric water kettle. Um, no, it is the Chipmunks toss up balloons. That's all I got in this one, right? Yeah, okay. I've actually seen this one or some like it for quite a while on eBay and apparently in the middle of the night one night I decided, yeah, today's the day, I must have it. We've done toss up balloons on the show before, I'm fairly certain. This is the first one I purchased that has like three balloons in the one package and the three sets of feet. I think that's kind of interesting packaging. And I'm not exactly sure what year these are from. The copyright says 1965. That doesn't necessarily mean these were made that year, but that's a copyright for Ross Bagdasarian, um, the company that owned Chipmunks. But no, I had some of the fun old Pioneer Qualitex logos. There's a Pioneer Rubber Company, Willard, Ohio. And, oh, Quali the Clown. Some fun stuff. I really like toss-up balloons. They're probably some of the most collectible things. We want to wrap up with a weird one. I've had this for a while. I've looked at it. I've not really played with it to figure it out yet. This is one of the most unusual balloon pumps in my collection. Little posh top head, top hat guy with a nozzle sticking out of his mouth and a soft, pumpy, pumpy top hat. Apparently it's a balloon pump. I've not actually tried to inflate a balloon with this before. <laughs> so let's try this together. I really doubt that a 260 balloon will work. They're very hard to blow up and you know, your old cardboard pumps, things like that won't inflate a 260. So I don't know that um, posh top hat guy will. Gotta give him a name, right? Let's see. Nope. Basically, his, he's as good as any civilian 
who tries to mouth inflate a balloon for the first time. So, all right, not gonna have a 260 there, huh? All right, Mr. Poshmik Top Hat, we will try an 11 inch round, which is not really made well to go on your uh, mouth nozzle. All right, let's see. Hmm, nothing. Where's the intake for that? It's really a, it's a flawed design. It's flawed at best, but didn't buy it to be a balloon pump. It's gonna sit on the shelf. It's a decorative item. It's fun, I don't know. Old vintage balloon stuff. Okay, these are some things that are gonna go back in the hoard, but um, you know, let's actually look at some twisted balloons. Um, gosh, I, I need to put all this stuff away. So let me get uh, Dan Staples again to help out with the heavy lifting. Um, we're working on something new called the twist it list. Sort of like a bucket list, stuff you wanna get around to twisting someday. Let's see what Dan Staples has on his twist it list. Hey again everyone, it's Dan, still from Dan's Balloons. Um, I had a tutorial, no, a, um, let's call it inspiration, I man I just wanted to make something, it's like a bucket list kind of thing, you know you think of those things like, oh I'd really love to make this, like Scott Tripp was like, hey what, you know, elf on a shelf, what about an ape that has a vape, because what better way to ruin the next generation than give them electronic things with fluid in it that can destroy their lungs really great um so it's not really a tutorial you want to make it you can i'll show you how i make this cute little face thing and then um i don't know but you're gonna need uh an ape basically you can use your standard ape or if you're like me you can do this and cut that and use your uh favorite hipster ape body with a uh, flannel shirt and blue jeans and stylish shoes because only <laughs> idiot hipsters wear flannel shirts rolled up sleeves. Um, but then you're gonna need a face for this ape. I like to use a six inch blush lingaloon. Blow it up like a giant man sized hand. Maybe a little bit more. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna take that six inch lingaloon and you're gonna divide it. Smush it out so it's like that. Right about halfway, twist it off. So you get this longer part of the bubble, and then here. Now you're gonna take this, and you're gonna tulip it back, right into this junction, and then you're gonna take this and wrap it all around. And then I'm gonna take what's left of my link, and I'm gonna use that to secure everything down. Like you do. So now I have a mouth and where I'm going to put the eyes. And then I'm going to use the new uh, deluxe chocolate from Metallitex, which is really awesome. They reformulated it, reformulated it. Uh, I'm going to take that, wrap it in, give it some jowls. That's a good word, jowls. I have jowls. Your mama has jowls. Your baby's mama has jowls. And, you know what, I'm going to wrap that head right over there. Give it a stylish hipster ape haircut. Maybe you think it's a monkey, I don't know. I don't judge animals based on their face like that, like you do, horrible person. Make a little neck. Attach it to your favorite hipster ape body. It. There's a horrible child in your line, don't really tie it, just wrap it around a couple times and it goes Phew, and then you laugh. And then horrible things happen to you because karma. So we have our ape who has no face. Oh, or a vape. Take that scrap of you. death. <laughs> Come on, do the face. Give a little nose. Get 
him an angry look because all millennials hate everything that goes on except giving themselves popcorn long. Scraps and grab, yay, woo, whatever, yay, okay. Hey, if you're like me, and you most certainly are, you have a bag of scrap balloons lying around, or a bucket, or a backyard swimming pool filled with balloon scraps. But what do you do with them? Uh, I don't know, I mean, you can use them, but you never really use all of them, right? They, they just accumulate so fast. So we're looking at a way to hopefully get rid of a lot of balloon scraps quickly, and easily while making new balloon things. Hey, do you guys remember the Patreon video we did a while back? The wrecking ball? Wrecking ball hat? Like this. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. But we don't want to knock over any like studio lights or whatever. Um, this is sort of like that. It's a tiny version of a wrecking ball. It's just a ball. It's a snowball. In fact, the jumping off point was this indoor plush snowball bucket. They started selling these a few years back around Christmas time. They're basically just little plush round balls that are supposed to be for indoor snowball fights. Hey, that sounds kind of fun. Well, these were originally $9. Why would you do that? Just use balloons, right? Well, here's the problem. You blow up a five inch round balloon. It doesn't really have much throwability, much snowball esque -esque about it. But that's where your friend, the balloon scrap, comes in. Grab a small handful of scraps. And it's really fun if you have, well, fun, efficient, if you have like 646 pieces or popped 11 inch round, 350s are good, these are large bulky pieces. Grab a small handful and a five inch round balloon. We're using white because snowball. Stretch the five inch round white balloon open. And we're gonna use the free fingers here to stuff that full of scraps. Stuff, 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 stuff. Om nom 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 nom. Eat up all the scraps. There we go, get those in there. Oh, that one wants to kill. No, get back in there. No one here escapes. There we go. Make sure all the pieces get all the way in, fully digested. Then blow up the balloon with the scraps inside. I recommend using a pump. It's kind of hard and also gross to blow it up with your mouth. There we go, like that. Big tip, underinflate. Give it some softness. You don't want them to pop easily because they turn into confetti bombs. Tie it up, and now that has some weight, you can really have a fun snowball fight. So, make, I don't know, six, eight, ten of those. We can have those in a bag, and when it's time to leave, that's a big tip, when it's time to leave, so you don't have to be around during the chaos, hand out this, yeah, you always have to have a yellow snow joke, right? Anyway, hand these out, have the kids fill them back and forth. They're nice and soft, you can get hit pretty hard. They don't hurt. We can really throw them far. They have a lot of uh, throwability, playability, and you get rid of a lot of scraps. Scraps and crap! Well guys, that's the end of this. Well guys, that's the end of the Mm. Uh, anyway, well guys, that's the end of the show. Huge thanks to Dan Staples for doing all the hard work for this episode, and thanks to Purple Pig, Cow, whatever, thanks to Creepy Top Hat Mick Balloon Blowy Guy, and thanks to you for watching the show. I could talk and talk and talk and ramble on, but you know what? This episode's long enough, so that's it. I'll see you next time. Take care. Toy shop, buy a bag of balloons with the money we've got. Set them free at the break of dawn. So one by one, they were gone. Back at the base, sparks in the software. Flash the message, someone's out there. Floating in the summer sky. 99 red balloons go by. 99.
Quick tips. Hey, want to put a bonus in here. So I want to show you something fun and useful and foosful, which is a new portmanteau with the two words. Chrome balloons are all the rage, right? People are raging about chrome balloons. Because they're chrome-tastic. No. One problem, though, is they only come in 260s and round balloons. And a lot of people want different sizes. A lot of people want 160 balloons because they would make really spectacular balloon dresses. Well, you can get chrome in 160s. Super simple. All you do is take a 160 balloon and slide that down inside. Any standard chrome 260. Kind of puff inflate that to make it slide in easier. I just realized I don't like the way that looks on video, so let me get one that's already stuffed. <laughs> there we go. So we have, there's a yellow 160 inside of a gold chrome 260. I'm going to put that on the Legenda pump. The way you're only pumping up the 160. And the 260 just acts as a little jacket that goes over the 160 to keep it warm. There we go. Sorry about the awkwardness. I typically don't hold a pump like this to inflate balloons. It's kind of just for video. All right, and then we'll inflate. We want to make sure to hold both balloons together through the wall of the 260 on the end. That way it doesn't bunch up. And as you blow it up, it inflates to the width of a 160. I'm going to tie that off. There we go. And to contrast, 260, 160. And it's a little bit more difficult to work with because it's double stuffed, but it's chrome and it's a 160 size and it's beautiful and lovely. Quick tip.